The address of the White House, the U.S. President's residence, is 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue Northwest, Washington, D.C., 20500. If you're an American, you probably know that the 20500 part is called a zip code. Let's find out a bit more about these zip codes. Welcome to 2 Lambda Plus Black. I am Heirua. ZIP is one of those nice acronyms that give meaning two different ways. It stands for Zone Improvement Plan, and also is a verb connoting speediness, reflecting that the zip code system was implemented to make mail delivery more efficient. Like area codes, zip codes are a nationwide system built upon smaller local systems that already existed. During World War II, Many of America's largest cities reached large enough volumes of mail that sectors of cities got assigned numbers that were postal codes that helped to sort mail. It might be really difficult to sort a large heap of mail into different geographical sections for a really large city. Who knows which part of a city Davis Street is in? But if you assign geographical sections to their own numbers, you could sort by the numbers first and have more manageable piles of mail to be delivered to those specific sections. One postal employee during this time, Robert Moon, laid out an idea for a system in which this strategy was expanded to the whole country. Years later, James Edward Day, Postmaster General under President Kennedy, concluded it was now prudent to actually do so, introducing the zip code system, which assigned five-digit postal codes to all of the United States. By the way, it was with the introduction of zip codes that two-letter postal abbreviations for states became standard. They started getting used to make more space to write the zip code. Fun fact, there was one state that changed its two-letter abbreviation. Nebraska was originally NB, but changed to NE at the request of Canada, who pointed out it would be nice if the US and Canada had no collisions in its two-letter abbreviations. NB was New Brunswick. Unlike the area code system, where numbers were intentionally assigned in a way that distanced similar numbers from each other, zip codes were intentionally assigned systematically by geographic area. After all, we are trying to aid geographical processing here. Zip codes generally increase from east to west across the United States, with the lowest zip codes in New England and the highest zip codes in Alaska. Slightly more specifically, the path of increasing zip codes goes south along the east coast and zigzags north and south as it goes west. More curiously though, at a finer level of geographic detail, zip codes are not as consistent with this higher level pattern. The state with the lowest zip codes is Massachusetts, even though you'd expect following this pattern the lowest zip codes would be in Maine. If you know US history, this might make you think about how Maine was once part of Massachusetts, but Maine's independence far predates the zip code system. My guess is that Massachusetts was a populous and powerful enough state to be able to demand that its numbers were the first chunk among New England. The lowest zip code in Massachusetts is 01001 for the city of Agawam. The highest zip code is 99950, which covers an area of several islands west of Ketchikan, Alaska. The first three digits of the zip code tell which sectional center facility, often abbreviated SCF, a piece of mail should go to. These are mid-level mail distribution centers. The fourth and fifth digits specify a local office. Most of the time, there is actually multiple three-digit prefixes assigned to one sectional center facility. The facility in Tampa, Florida is assigned 335, 336, and 346. The facility in Dayton, Ohio is assigned 453, 454, and 455. For some reason, the entire state of Kansas has only one facility in Wichita, assigned all of 669 through 676 and 678. It's actually quite rare for a sectional center facility to serve only one three-digit prefix. Here are all but one of them. I'll address the one I left out later. Now, there are several situations in the United States where there is a small pocket or section of a state near its border with another state that is more connected and associated with that other state than the state it's in. In many of these cases, this pocket or section is assigned zip codes within the range of the state it's in, but is actually served by a sectional center facility in the outside state. The facility in Reno, Nevada, serves not just 894, 895, and 897 in Nevada, but also 961 across the border in California. 
The facility in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, serves not just 570 and 571 in South Dakota, but also 510, 511, 512, and 513 across the border in Iowa. In even rarer exceptions, such a part of a state could actually be assigned a zip code within the range of another state. One case of this is Fisher's Island, an island that is officially part of New York, but is geographically closer to Connecticut than to any of the rest of New York, and for which the only ferry service to the island is from Connecticut. In fact, the island being de jure part of New York is pretty much the only New York thing about the island, so much so that the zip code Fisher's Island is assigned is 06390, which is in the Connecticut range of zip codes. Have you heard about the part of Kentucky that is separated from the rest of Kentucky by Missouri because surveyors were sloppy? That exclave is assigned zip code 38079, which it shares with the adjacent portion of Tennessee. So this zip code crosses state lines. A particularly weird case is the exception counter exception case of the 885 prefix. 885 falls into the New Mexico range of zip codes, but is assigned to El Paso, Texas, along with 799. But El Paso itself has a sectional center facility, which serves not just El Paso's 799 and 885, but also prefix 798, also in Texas, and also New Mexico's 880 and 883 across the border. So, El Paso's facility serves some locations in New Mexico, for which this part of New Mexico itself has a section of El Paso zip codes associated with it. And the ridiculous part is that Texas has not ran out of zip codes. The remaining El Paso zip codes could have been assigned unclaimed numbers within Texas's range, and yet that did not happen. See, in a different case, 398 is a prefix assigned to the part of Georgia west of Albany, despite being in the Mississippi range, but Georgia ran out of zip code prefixes. Incidentally, 398 is served by the facility in Tallahassee, Florida. Now, remember how I said the state with the lowest zip codes is Massachusetts? I said the state with the lowest zip codes rather than the lowest zip codes for a reason. Agawam, Massachusetts may have 01001, but the 006, 007, and 009 prefixes are assigned to Puerto Rico, and the 008 prefix is assigned to the U.S. Virgin Islands. Atuntas, Puerto Rico, is assigned the zip code 00601, which is still not the lowest zip code in use. There's one more strange exception, the zip code 00501, which is a zip code exclusive to the IRS facility in Holtzville, New York. The surrounding parts of Holtzville use the 11742 zip code, a normal zip code for New York, but just the IRS facility uses 00501. It is the only zip code of the 005 prefix that is used, and is the true lowest zip code. Now let's go back to the one prefix sectional center facilities where previously I mentioned I left one out that I would address later. That prefix is 969, served by the facility in Barigada, Guahan, or Guam. This facility serves only one prefix, but this prefix is quite expansive. In fact, it transcends international borders. 969 covers not just Guahan and the northern Mariana Islands, but also the countries of Belau, Micronesia, and Madel, former U.S. colonies that currently use the U.S. postal system. If you've been keeping track, there's one American territory still unaccounted for, and that is America Samoa. America Samoa has just one zip code, 96799, which is in the middle of the Hawaii range of zip codes. Finally, U.S. military bases have their own ranges of zip codes assigned. They are the zip prefixes 090 through 099, 340, and 962 through 966. I want to point out some organizations, buildings, and businesses that have their own dedicated zip code, usually because of the sheer volume of mail that they have. Many IRS facilities have a dedicated zip code assigned to them, including the enigmatic 00501 mentioned prior. The Empire State Building has its own zip code, 10118. Walmart Headquarters has its own zip code, 72716. Stanford University has its own zip code, 94305. And finally, Smokey Bear, you know, the one who reminds you that only you can prevent wildfires, has its own zip code. 20252. 
It is quite incredible that Smokey Bear gets a dedicated zip code. You know, even the president has to share a zip code with the first spouse in the White House staff. What the president and the first spouse do get, though, are unique zip plus four codes. The president gets two o five o o o o o one, and the first spouse gets two o five o o o o o two. The four additional digits after the hyphen are optional and provide even greater geographical specificity. If you have a PO box, that box probably has its own zip plus four code. Some people have an attachment to their zip codes, though it's not as common as with area codes. Do you have an attachment to your zip code? Leave a comment below about your attachment to your zip code, or leave a comment about something else if you want to, like your favorite terminal moraine, or what you had for lunch. Hopefully, those weren't the same thing. Where are you gonna eat for dinner? Your second favorite terminal moraine? Sounds suboptimal. In any case, remember to love the night.